morning, church. Good morning. I see a lot of familiar faces this morning. Very good to have you in the house of love. Amen. Wonderful, church. Wonderful, yeah. Shall we all just worship God this morning? Amen.
Thank you.
Spirit to move in this place. And Lord Jesus, our focus is on you, nothing else. And Lord, you are a firm foundation that we build a life upon. And when all else fails, Lord, you never fail. When everything changes, you remain the same, Lord.
be reminded that every promise that you have said will come to pass. And let us be reminded that every promise that has been written will never fail. Because Lord Jesus, you are our rock, you are our strength, and you are our constant. And Lord Jesus, even if every day is goes by, Lord, every second is changing, and every every time and everything that we are doing, Lord, will never remain the same. The Lord Jesus, we can believe and we can trust and we can hope that you will remain the same, Lord. And Lord Jesus, let our hearts be open this morning. Let our spirit be open to receive your word that you're going to give us this morning. So Lord, we continue to bless this time that we have in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Uh, once again, we want to welcome you in the name of the Lord. And uh, we are second batch and third batch from Australia. <laughs> uh, Lily, uh, Anthony, and Zachary. Okay? And then Brother Tao and Sister Bia. We all are happy to you. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the announcement this morning. Okay, this uh, Tuesday prayer portal online is on on the Tuesday at uh, eight thirty p.m. Okay, the Zoom ID and passcode is on the slide. The next one is uh, Friday. We still continue on in our prayer altar online in the morning at ten thirty a.m. So uh, still do join us, those of you who are available. And I now ask uh, Sister Gladys to give us a short testimony. Gladys for the testimony. Can I have the next slide? 
Hey, uh, uh, every year we, we have uh, what we call a target to mission support for a few pastors uh, in the Cebu, Myanmar, and Malaysia. And, uh, our target this year is 9,000. So as at 13th January, uh, we have collected 1,100. We still have a shortfall of 7,900 for this year. Okay? So those of you who like to contribute to this mission fund, please bang it to FCD Goha. A bank account number is 5122315158245824. Okay, let's move to the Tyson offering. Uh, Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring the whole time into the hall storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for me. Uh, those of you who are new, those of you who come back from overseas, you know where is your offering box? Okay, it's at the back. Okay, the blue box at the back. Okay, but you can also do online transfer to SD Perhan Bank uh, uh, account number. Okay, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We want to thank you for your providence for all of us that you have been faithful in providing for all our needs. Lord. And even as we sow it back into your, the kingdom of God, Lord, we continue to bless every giver. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, next Sunday is uh, New Year Day on the 22nd. Uh, there is no service. Uh, okay, no service, no Zoom service, no on-site service. Okay, just enjoy our uh, New Year. And then on the next uh, coming week, is on the 29th January, we will come back for on-site service. Okay? Uh, our speaker is Honor, Honorary Elder Yonokni. He's talking on Christ's cross on Calvary. Okay? So those of you who still can uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, those of you who like to join us on site this too on the 29th of January. Okay, without further ado, this morning we are glad to have our Associate Minister, Sandy Lee, who also is my wife. <laughs> Uh, we share with us the pottery of the servant. Let's put our hand together. Wow! Praise God! So New Year come early to FCT, yeah? All the blessings come from Australia. So happy, so wonderful, wonderful day. Father God, thank you for this wonderful, blessed day. And thank you for our brothers and sisters back from Australia joining us in this celebration Sunday. We pray for a wonderful blessing. I pray that you talk to me, uh, speak to my mouth. Lord, and Lord, your Holy Spirit be the minister to each one of us individually. In His name I pray. Amen. Okay, just now when we were uh, worshipping, only I saw a vision, you know. I saw a vision of a cardboard box. And it's like those for the delivery one, uh, uh, for actually I saw it, but I don't know what it did. That is like old pattern box, just a cut of box. <laughs> then I don't understand what it meant. And then much later I realized God said it's like a box from shopping delivery. <laughs> it's like a shopping box that you have ordered and waiting for it to be delivered. <laughs> then God said, Hey, remind my children. Whatever they are holding on in their prayer closet, whatever they have ordered and holding on to my word, it shall be delivered. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, powerful, right? Yeah. Let's say now, yeah. and then Jenna sang a new song, no? From Mrs. Neverfield. How oh, God is so wonderful. And then another thing is, when your package don't come you know, through your Shopee or whatever, what do you do? You track, right? You call up, right? They are going to, you know, not going to let that merchant go. They are going to, you know, make a fuss. But how come, ah, uh, things are not being delivered? The promises are not being delivered to our doorstep. We just quite why they with it. No, we must go to our prayer concert. We must declare the word of God. We must sing praises. We must go back, right? Open up the spiritual gates. Open up the darkness because sometimes. The enemy wants to block the flow of God's blessing. Sometimes, and most of the time, he doesn't want God to begin to open spiritual frontier for you, break truths. That's why the box so tempted takes so long to reach you. But it will come. Amen? Amen. Let's give our hands. Whatever you're believing God for, be it a healing, a 
salvation for our loved ones. Father God, we thank you for your vision, for your blessing, and to remind us your promises never fail. And Lord, it shall be delivered on us. And right now, lift up our spirits, O oh God. Lift up our hands. And we will be reminded in this new year, we shall sing praises of victory. We shall bombard, Lord, the kingdom, O Lord, of heaven, O oh God. We shall pray, Lord. We shall intercede, O oh God, until our whole household, our friends, our family members shall be saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's a really blessing, right? Our whole house will be blessed. Amen. Safe in this new year season. And they said that instead of making New Year's resolution, why not, as Christians, we must remember we need to make new life resolution. Right? New life resolution meaning, Lord, you have a new life for me, but I have not been really experiencing it, I've not been uh, uh, appropriating it, I've not been walking into my heritage as a child of God. This year, I want to diligently purposely, intentionally remind myself of what that new life in Christ looked like and begin to discipline myself, walk into that new life. And that's a resolution I believe all of us should do. I'm so blessed by this statement, you know, make a new life resolution. I never saw that thing before. So I'm going to do that. And you know, right now, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm very erratic in my prayer life, you know. I'm very negative in my confession, you know. I'm still full of hatred and for unforgiveness. I'm still full of strife. There's no trust in you. These are some of the things that only you know. Write it down. Let's make a new life resolution. Alright? Next one. Where is Father God? Okay. What happened is most of the time at the beginning of the year, I will actually ask God. God, you have a vision for me. You have something to teach me, to tell me. Be it for my life, for my church. Just let me know. And then I saw this vision as I asked God you know, about this year, about my life, about what I need to learn. And I saw this vision in my mind of you know, this child in a swing just being pushed. Can do the makeover, you know, can do some 
and there, but the body clock, the biological clock, does tick and get older. And most of the time, you live in this mode, you know, oh, I'm getting older, I probably be getting weaker, I better take a rest, you know, maybe the pain will come, you know, what we're gonna do, I feel more useless. No. So this is the words that I want to hang on together. What am I to do? Let's do together. The righteous self flourish. Oh God. This year, I am to flourish. I tell myself that. This year, I am to flourish. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Actually, the word that God gave me for my life is, uh, for all of us is, just remember to grow. Look at your neighbor and say, remember to grow. <laughs> <laughs> remember to grow, not rot, ah. Uh. Not, 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 Okay? Huh? Uh, Zachary grow very like Thai, okay? Yeah. Zachary grow very beautiful, okay? Right? Grow in the spirit as well. Okay. And those who are what? Planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the cause of our God. I'm so glad for SCP because being planted in the house of God talks about being gathered together. Come to the sanctuary. Do not forget the fellowship of Come together, be in a community, find your community. I was telling Pastor, no? Very interesting. Why is he telling me this word? Your tribe. Look at your neighbor and say your tribe. You know what's tribe? There's 12 tribes in the Israel. No? There are some tribes, very big one, right? Judah, big tribe. There's some tribe, very small one. What tribe is one? Natalie. Natalie tribe. And Benjamin is very, very small, right? So I believe Pastor on these few days and say, do not despise.
and there is no arrival. Let's read together again. To declare he is my rock. Where do you need the rock of God? You need the rock of God when the moment is down. When the storm, when the earthquake hits, when the, uh, the, the, the tragedy comes, you want to find the rock, you want to find the hide. You want, you want to find refuge. And God says, declare it. God is eternal. He will never leave us or forsake us. The very fact that there's been such a big transition of change in essence is because he has been our rock. And he has revealed his plan. So we must rejoice in that. Not say, no, no, this is not God's plan, no, this is not work, work, um, a work of man. No, it's not. It's the rock of God. It's the rock of God. So now, let's back us. Uh, now it's my message now. Huh? <laughs> okay, so recently I've been reading the word of God. And I've just finished the Bible of the book of Joshua. And let's read. The book of Joshua, interestingly, the first verse, it starts with death. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, a hey, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then. Then, the very last verse of the book of Joshua, is actually in chapter 24, verse 23, the very last verse. It's actually talking about Eliza, son of Aaron, died. It's also talking about that. And in the last chapter itself, at the beginning of the last chapter, is where Joshua died. Joshua 24 died. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord. Dying is life. And in this passage, what I see is so interesting is the theme of the book of Joshua. The theme of the book of Joshua is to Enter and possess the land that God has promised. And God started it with the book of Moses. My servant has died. And at the very end, Joshua, my servant has died. So as we begin to look at this, I just see how God loved Moses. God pronounced Moses as my servant. Isn't that a great title? A, 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 a wonderful life that Moses has led, that God acknowledged him as my servant. And look at the difference. Eliezer, he wasn't said that he's a servant. He just died. There's no mention of Eliezer, my servant. So two person, Moses, my servant. Joshua, my servant. And I'm telling myself, and I think for this year, I want to put a portrait of a servant of God in front of me. I want to say, God, what really matters in my life is just not to live, but to emulate, to learn. What does it mean to be the servant of God? And to say that Moses is a servant means his mission had always been to serve God, right? That's why God said he's my servant. No? To say that Moses was his servant is he has been obedient to the commands of God. He has been willing to lay down his dreams, his passion, to follow after his master. This is what being a servant means. So with this thought in mind, I, I began to say, God, where else in the Bible can I understand about servanthood? Servant, there's so many. Even the New Testament, Apostle Paul always said, Paul, the servant of God. They always say that. But I will take from one passage today, and just to give you a few marks or a few characteristics of a servant of God. How we look like. Alright? Next one. So my main passage will come from this incident. I really feel the like Genesis 24. Who is familiar with this passage in the Bible? Yeah, you got a hand see. Nobody, yeah. This passage where Abraham's servant go and find a bride for Isaac. Ah, yeah, they were very exciting one, right? Very romantic one, right? So everybody, the eyes open already now, not sleeping already. <laughs> okay, Abraham's servant is an example of how to carry out the Lord's will and word in our lives. This is what we're going to do. And interesting. Two pictures is given in this passage. 
a picture of a servant, and a picture of a bride. Another powerful image that God always tells us in His Bible is we are the bride. We are the bride of Christ. So what if you merge these two pictures together? The bride of Christ is the well-prepared bride to be the bride that has the servant. Can you be that? Yeah, we always say, you know, how to be that bride of Christ? How to be that bride prepared for Christ coming? Christ coming again? But what if I tell you the most prepared bride is the bride who has the heart servant edge. And you see this in this passage. Alright? Okay, let's go. The first mark of a servant, let your friend and neighbor and say, secure in your identity. Right? What happened was, when, uh, I'll tell you the background later, but I'll just tell you about the first word that come out from this man, Mark, when he was asked to introduce himself. Because in this passage, the servant was not given a name. Nobody know what is this servant's name. He was not given a name. Like Elijah, the Hazi, you know, Elijah had the servant of the Hazi. He was not given a name. But he was brought to the bride's father. He was brought to Rachel's father to introduce himself. And if I was given an opportunity to introduce myself, I'll probably declare my name first, right? I am Sandy, the servant of Abraham. I mean, the servant of Shusha. <laughs> no, right? So I'll probably tell my name. But interestingly, this servant never mentioned his own name because he says, I am Abraham's servant. He's so secure in his identity, status, money, talent. Whatever the world finds identity in is not an issue with this servant. And I think in this world that we live in, a lot of insecurities that are happening now in our modern world is because of the insecurity of identity. Now we see a lot of people that are pursuing certain things that they need to have, certain image, certain uh, uh, they, they have a milestone, no? I need to have something at what age, how much money I need to make at what age. Why? Because identity. If I don't achieve all of this at this certain age, I have no identity. La. I, I find not much purpose. I, I find that, nah, I, I, I find that I'm nobody. I cannot. I'm so sad. I get a depression. So a lot of people actually are facing depression, say, facing a lot of issues because they are so insecure in identity. Not so much as wanting to be uh, noticed, but more so of the security that identity gives them. You know? So, as a true servant of God, we must remember, we must be willing to identify ourselves purely by God. Meaning, Jesus relinquished his throne, came down on heaven, as a servant, because he's able to do that, he's able to finish his calling. And God was telling me, Sandy, identity issues and insecurity are many a times a stumbling block for my people to follow my calling, to follow my purpose of life. Because they hold on to certain things, not willing to let go. Because they are insecure. And because they hold on to the let go, they cannot hear clearly the voice of God telling them, hey, come this way. Do this thing. Just be patient. Just trust me. They cannot see it. So because they are so insecure and they have no identity and not able to rest under the identity of that servant of God. Because I believe this to serve God, you know. I'm just here to do God's will. If God put me here, I'm satisfied. If God put me there, I'm satisfied. But because they are so troubled and not satisfied, they cannot hear the voice. They cannot follow a God. Only when he was able to lay down. That's why even Jesus struggled, no? Jesus struggled until the very end. And he would say, what? Not my will, but yours. He was able to lay down all his security, everything. There must be something that Jesus wanted. I'm your servant. As a servant, if God, you ask me to go to the cross, I will go. Because a servant, a true faithful servant, is one that is willing to go.
go and do what God asks you to do. Part of the thing is being a Tyson offering. Serve the good. God, I want to pay Tyson offering. Oh, I'm so much money. Oh, no. But God said, if the servant is go and do this, he's supposed to do. That include Tyson offering. He's supposed to go and just do it. Alright, next one. So let's start from the beginning. The beginning interesting, no? Now, Abraham was old. Well advanced in years. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh, that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God. So, Abraham has a wish, has a desire. He wants his servant to help him fulfill it. And he called his servant to him. And this is not an ordinary servant. This is a servant that he trusts. A servant that is given the charge of all that he had. But yet, even with this servant, he asked him to swear. Why? Because in the Jewish tradition, if you want someone, for someone to allow his hand to be set on, was a sign of submission to authority. And not like, you have ever seen that? And he, okay, go <laughs> It's a funny tradition, right? But it's just a symbol of submission. And Abraham just wants to tell him, okay, I'm going to give you a quite a difficult challenge, quite a difficult instruction, but will you do it? And I want to say this. Submission to authority means that I acknowledge this authority over me. I acknowledge my role. And I'm going to do my best to fulfill it. You see, making him swear means that he will do his best. He will not give up on this mission. He will not shut up. Because actually, Abraham cannot, uh, you know that actually, um, Abraham cannot monitor him. Though. He was actually sending him to go back to his hometown to find a bride for his son. Actually, uh, if the man is a rascal, not a very servant, he just goes simply anywhere and find la, and bring back. He would he know or not? He doesn't know ma. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to check the identity. There's no way to check whether you know he can just do anything. That's why he has to make sure that he swear. He makes sure that he's really hold on to his word. You know, because the, the servant can just do a shortcut. You must understand that uh, in those days it's not like now I just take a plane, I just go to Ipo, I just go somewhere. He has to travel very far back to Abraham's hometown, back to where Abraham comes from, back from his tribe to get the wife back for Isaac. So the trip, the journey is a dangerous journey. It's a long journey. It's a difficult journey. And even when you go all the way there to find back the bride from within Abraham's family, it will be very difficult. But yet, even if it's so difficult, Abraham will also ask him to submit to my authority. Doesn't it look like God sometimes? But God, are so difficult one more. You ask me to wait and wait and be holy, God will get very more. So difficult. Hi, uh, how, how to follow like this? Will you submit to his authority and say yes? And that's what this servant did. He did. You know? Okay, let's read some more. Alright? So, he actually did. Okay, let's read some more. Lah. Let's read. And you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of Canaanite among whom I'm living. You cannot get them here, no? But will go to my country, my own relative, and get a wife for my Isaac. The son was given instructions to obey. He was only given instructions to obey. My friend, sitting here, have God left you any instruction to obey? God, where is he? In your Bible. Wrong answer. It should be in my heart. I've hidden your word in my heart. So God has given specific instruction a knowledge of His will. I want to challenge myself. As a servant of God, my God, I want to have a knowledge.
knowledge, not just the written knowledge, not just the knowledge that Pastor tell me this morning, I hear a fantastic message, like, wow, powerful. But after two weeks later, I forget. Maybe, well, I want to find time to sit on your feet and so listen to your will that that will uh, begin to be in my heart. Wow, it began to disturb me, it began to challenge me, it began to be like a rainbow to me, make me jump with joy, you know, make me have expectation, make me have faith. I'm going to have that knowledge of the will. And everyone was so specific, they gave me so many things. This is what you should do, this is what you should not do. True? Bible gives us, this is what you should obey, this is what you should not obey. If you obey me in the book of Deuteronomy, it's like all your blessings, Deuteronomy 28. If you disobey me, it's like all your curses. Ah, is the word of God, the knowledge of God, very real? Huh? Are we taking heed to it, this servant? Even that you swear by it, I will hold on to it and do your will. And the third mark of the servant of God is in the Knowledge of his will written in your heart. Amen? Look at the next one. Let's read this verse again. One to go. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Who over here loves to play that go? They love to play that go. Nobody else, ah? The three I said, you don't know what I do. You don't want to play that go? It's not me, but I'm not sure that I'm going to be the only thing that I'm going to do. All right. So, when you look at the Lego, uh, it doesn't make much sense. Oh, no, 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 so many bricks. You can actually, uh, you look at it, uh, and you actually chuck it away, or you don't miss anything. But the Lego only comes alive with the person who has the vision, has the patience, even has the blueprint of what will happen when you link all these blocks together for a beautiful story. And I want to say that many a times on our side, we just need Lego bricks. Really, we cannot understand the will of God. And on God's side, He sees the big structure. He knows. That's why He said, "I know the plans I have for you." It's good. It's not just Lego bricks. It's this big house, this mansion. I know. I see. It's good. You can see this Lego. And God said, "What?" Commit the law of whatever you do to establish your plan. So what happened is, as you look at the Lego, God will say, hey, turn right, turn left, do this, do that, obey this, obey that. So you're actually shipping the things of your life together. Go to Australia, oh yeah, because say I will go. Sell your house, oh yeah, my house. Then suddenly, you do, 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 full of fear, right? At first, right? No, 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 I 
If my son leave this land, I cannot. So instead of my son leave this land, you must go and bring the bride back. He will send an angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the wife is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this whole of mine. Only do not take my son back then. Do not compromise. No compromise. No compromise. And then look at this passage. Question. How many servants do you see in this passage? How many? Two. Two or one? Who say one servant? You see this passage. Who say two? Two servants. Two servants. Why you say two? Who's the other servant? Who's the other servant? Everyone. Crazy. Yeah. Do you know Abraham spoke as if he knows everything what God is going to do, right? Because Abraham himself has been that faithful servant all his life. That's why he can testify. Hey, I have been that servant now. I have followed God blindly. I have read my book, just following his word, under submission, under authority. I have done that. And son, look, look, look. In my old age, can't you see my land? Can't you see I'm so prosperous? Can't you see I have no son, but now I have a son? Church, 
door is open. Not how diligently you just listen to the uh, 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 a message once a while on Sunday you come. Not enough. It strengthen yourself. Do you know that your diet and my diet is different? Yes. What you eat at home is different. What you eat. <laughs> what you need for your body is different. What you eat. Our own body, how they learn it, one you know. Maybe some of you eat more calcium, some of you eat more protein, maybe something more. And only the Holy Spirit can make the right words put it together to nourish your body. Understand? So that's why I never uh, strengthen myself just the Sunday preaching. Because the Sunday preaching is that word for the congregation. But maybe in my own private closet, there are specific words that God wants to give me through His word. My specific diet. So if I don't know how to spend time with God, read God's word and, and, and dwell in His presence, I cannot be strengthened properly. Only when we are strengthened, we can do the will of God. Amen? Amen. Anybody or agree now? Uh. <laughs> okay. Right now, that's this picture. Now he's traveling up. Huh? So now he's on the way, thinking about the long journey with all the camel. He's going to the far away land. Okay, let's read the next. When the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of goods from his master, he set out from Aaron and made his way to the town of Aaron. So he went fully equipped. Fully equipped for his mission. Basically, this is the bride price. Lah. Everything that the bride wants to have, wants to impress the new bride family, all is there. The silver, the gold, the silk, the, the herbs, everything that's important is all in this temple. And as I look at that, you know, I look at this and God is saying to me, hey, everything you actually need for your life to work well, I give it to you. You just have to discover. There are some talents that God will give us for this journey. There are certain wisdom that God wants to give us. There are certain things that God uh, has. And so when we find ourselves in a place where we are so not able to perform, sometimes we give up to it. We should actually begin to exercise our faith and say, God, because you put me here, I'm sure you equip me and make me well able to do this. Do you think that Joseph naturally became the leader and the prime minister in the foreign land? He was put there. But I believe Joshua had, uh, Joseph had such a relationship with God or such a trust, or maybe God gave him the right set of skill. You know? Maybe at the time he didn't trust God, but God gave him the right set of skill that he can able to do it. I want to encourage all of us here. If God has given you to a tough spot, a tough space, just remain faithful to that place. Do not give up too early because if you do that, you're not exercising your faith. You're not, you're not trusting God for more. And sometimes God wants to expand you, put you in a difficult place so that you, you hear more, you, you begin to be shaped and sharpened because God said, Ma, God wants to shape us, make us more like Jesus. Maybe God wants to make you be a better person in a difficult environment. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you are equipped to do it. Okay, tell your neighbor, you are equipped. You are so <laughs> Don't say no. <laughs> Don't say no to your next assignment, you are equipped. Alright? Okay, beautiful. Let's okay, switch it. So what do you need from God today? Alright, let's read this word. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Do you believe that? Yes. Let's read it. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You are well able. Alright, next one. How about this verse? May the God of peace equip you with everything good that you may do his will. Even if you have a full-time calling to quit your job and trust him, God will equip you to do his will. Alright? Next one. And let's go here. He had the camels, so he reached the town of Ila, huh? When he reached the town of Ili. Let's read together. He had the camels kneel down in the well outside of the town. It was towards evening, the time of women go out to the water. Then he prayed. Wow. 
I didn't see all the women coming. Oh, then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today. Show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I'm standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to the young woman, Please let down your jar that I may have to drink. And he says, Drink, and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know you have shown kindness to my master. Wow! This servant ah uh, have great faith ah. Uh. No one said he has great faith. First of all, he not only prayed that. Okay. Not only. Did he pray that the woman will give him water? Alright? That's why the people are so mad. Because when the woman come up, when you're a stranger, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. But not only does he pray that this lady will give him water, he also prayed that this woman will let all the camels be watered. Do you know how many camels he has? Ten camels. That's a lot of camels. There's a lot of water. All right. Okay. So, but what really, truly? Just now, what I really want to see is how this man was able to depend on God. Right? He he put the selection process up based on one prayer. I think that is very, I need to say, foolhardy or full of faith. Because if I was him, probably first of all I look at the women, probably I go and ask where they come from. Because it's supposed to find from the home town or the family, ma. So probably I go and ask for recommendations. Hey, do you know what? Uh, Every family or which where? You know, maybe ask for some direction. But he just put his selection all on one prayer, no, just one prayer. And not only one prayer, a very difficult prayer. A prayer that this woman will also be a servant. Right? Yes, is it a servant? Only a woman who will feed you, let you drink water, and let all the other animals has a servant. So he is really depending on God. So I want to tell you that the master of the servant is the one who depends on God. That's right. Or who are you depending on in your daily life? In modern society, I find that many of us don't really depend on God. We depend on many things. We depend on our bank account. We depend on friendship. We depend on people. We depend on a pulling string to get that job, to get that favor. But then this this servant just pray and we depend on the of God. Wow. Okay, and his prayer was answered. Okay, let's pray. Let's read. Before he has finished praying, I love that. Every Rebecca came up with a jar on her shoulder, and she was the daughter of the two sons of Luca, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. Meaning from the same family. Wow. Even before he had finished, God already answered. And the woman was very beautiful. And the servant hurried to meet her and said, for all, I don't know, so many women, and suddenly he saw this woman, and he went to the sir, and the geese give me a little water from my jar. Okay, and what she said, drink my lot, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hand and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels too, until they have had enough to drink. Volunteer or not? Volunteer. Voluntarily, this woman came and prayer was answered. And we all love the happy story where prayer answered. And some of us ask us, ask me, okay, Sister Sandy, how about when prayer not answered? How about if prayer not answered? Uh, maybe that one my next message. <laughs> what about when prayer not answered? Huh? Alright, but when prayer is not answered, the Bible tells us to wait patiently. That's what God always says. Wait patiently. And as you wait patiently, you will get fresh directions, you will get fresh uh, desires, you will get fresh 
revelation. So we pray God and say, you don't say what you mean. You don't give up hope, you don't turn bitter, you don't follow him. Alright? Okay, now let's read some facts. Yeah? Facts. Do you know that a thirsty camel can drink about 20 gallons at one time? I read somewhere else, I'm just reading out. 20 gallons times 10 camels will be what? 200 gallons. That means she literally has to go for the trips. Assuming the one gallon. You know when you don't have enough water, you want bucket up. Very important now. So the camel, not just how many camels will you drink. The drink is satisfied, you know. So we, we always read this Bible, we always think it's simple, and you should not. Wow, what a servant heart. And to tell you, I remind you, this woman is beautiful one. Normally beautiful girl, ah, don't know how to do housework one. Sing song yet one. We need to marry rich man to me. No, it was a servant heart. Powerful. Okay, next one. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring, waving a becca and two braces. In other words, he's already asking her to be the bride to be that. Then he asked, whose daughter are you? Please tell me. And first, the passage said that she is, but never tell her about her identity yet, right? Now he asks, that's why she did it, huh? Whose daughter are you? Is there room in your father's house? And she answered, I'm the daughter of the two, the son, the mother, all of them are Wow, what beautiful. I just read that. Let's read together. Amazing grace and favor of God to be. Let's write ahead. Let's affirm this. Father God, I want amazing grace. And favor of the only you. This one. can ask. Okay, lastly, the mask of the servant. Then the boy was so amazed. Oh, wow, you heard so amazed, you know? So he bowed down and worshiped God. He was saying, God, this miracle can only you do one out. Nothing. Nobody can do this. Only you. He recognized God's sovereignty. God's supremacy, he recognized that as he prays to God, the God of Master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to my house of the master. He became a worshipper of God because he saw a My question is, Bible says, do you need to see a mighty miracle of God to be the believer of God? No! That's why Thomas, Jesus appeared to Thomas, Thomas said, Jesus said, Thomas, you only believe because you see. But blessed are those who believe and don't see. And we can be worshippers of God until we die and never see the promises that God tells us. Do you realize that Moses actually in technicality never see? You want to read back the first verse, what, what the first verse said? Let's go back to the first verse. Go back to the... No, I'm, I'm going on. Okay, I never mind. You know the verse say, Moses, the servant of God, died, and now then, go back read that. Now then, as this word, now then. Now then, that means the story continues without Moses' return. The story can continue without us return, and the promises can still be realized. The promises was realized in Joshua's generation. Understand? Right? Okay, so let's close. Day, just a wrap up. How to carry out God's will and work in our lives. We need to be secure in our identity. We need to always be submission to authority. We have a knowledge of His will. Deal with our fears and doubts. Trust Him. Be fully equipped. Know that we are equipped. Depend on God alone and your worship. Amen. Let's pray. Let us stand up. Oh, Shantana Tashi. Oh, let us. This is time with God. I spoke the reading. And now the time for the Holy Spirit to come and just bless us. I'm asking us to come. Oh, Shaka. Just bless us. Father God, I commit this time to you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this word that you've spoken. Not even as now we worship you. I just pray for your Holy Spirit to move right. Everyone now in this room to get a vision, a word, an encouragement, a touch. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all these things. Jesus, Lord.
Let's just worship the Lord as we close. Let this be a prayer of our hearts, Lord.
And we find that our life is just so routine. But I believe God is saying to you this morning that I want to put a fresh vision in your heart in the name of Jesus. Yes, we may be physically, may not be so able as we were young. But God is saying to you, God will still use you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. And all, all we need to do is to say, God, I'm willing. Use me. God is going to use you. And I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for a rekindle of a vision, of a fresh vision for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, that they will never say, Lord, that, Lord, I'm too old to do something for you. But, Lord, we know that when you called Moses, he was 80 years old. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus. God, I assume you as Lord. Lord, as I, I, I share about the testimony about Dorothy Austin, Lord, 89 years old today. She is still serving you. She is still testifying of your goodness. Lord, she is still writing books. Hallelujah. To declare of the goodness of God, how you have healed her powerfully, tremendously, Lord. Father, we pray that our life is a living testimony, Lord. We pray to God that you use us to be a testimony to others, wherever they come across our path, Lord. That we may speak forth of your glory and your works in our lives. Father, we want to bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I want to have a privilege, Pastor, to share
ask uh, all of the gentlemen to be in. I just wanted to encourage one of you, uh, all of you, just maybe just pray out one another, just pray for one another. Amen. And just feel free and just begin to pray for one another that God will begin to do a work in our lives as a servant of the Lord. And some of you need special prayer or healing, just pray for one another for strength to come upon you. Each one of another age. Pray for Brother Tom and the Let's go ahead. Close here, the Lord bless you, and uh, uh, 
And we will see you on 29 of January, okay? So turn to your neighbor and say, 29 January on site service, next Sunday no service, okay? And I want to pray a prayer for all of you. Those of you are traveling back, whether you go back to Australia or go back to hometown, and the Lord bless you and we grant you journey safety in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. Hello. Yeah, what's the Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.